Hey guys, and welcome to part three of uh, the AT's Jumanji box making. Um, so it took me like a couple nights to figure out this zigzaggy pattern and how to make it curved instead of pointy corners. So I ended up actually figuring that out and I just copy and paste the same ones. So I don't have to do it all over again and then just resize it and rotate it to then fit the top part. Um, sorry if it kind of goes a little fast, but, and then I add the AT's logo. I was having issues kind of importing it into Illustrator. And then I just use the pen tool, um, to outline and trace the AT's text. Um, and then I did end up forgetting to do the left part of the E. Um, so if I get it pretty much all in there, and then I noticed I missed it. And had to kind of backtrack a little bit to uh, get that part added in. Uh, so it actually looks like an E. And then um, yeah, just resize it to fit, change the mapping a little bit, um, outline the little star shape because I want it to be three dimensional. So basically all the pieces that I am outlining here with the pen tool are going to end up being three dimensional pieces. And then I start, decided to um, work on the corner pieces and individual um, files for just so it was easier and I can just import what I need in and then if I ever want to use it for a different project I definitely can do that as well. Um, so I ended up learning a lot when I did the test prints or cuts of these images um, so I ended up making a lot a lot of adjustments to them to make them fit how it was right for my glow forge is what I ended up using and cutting them from. Um, so yeah, just copy and pasting a lot of stuff just so I don't have to redraw it. It should be kind of close to the same anyways. Um, so <laughs> yeah, um, those little squares were a nightmare. I tried curving them and then at the end of the day I was just like, no, we're just going to make it a normal square. Um, I ended up making them a little bit larger because one thing I figured out with the Glowforge is the how it actually views these files. I'm very new to the Glowforge, um, so I've only cut a couple projects prior to this. But I found out how it kind of read everything, which is also why I had to redesign these files a lot. So with the strokes, which are basically what the lines are, they're called strokes. I ended up finding out that I needed them to be about four points, is what it's called, four points, thick, to get a really nice clean cut so it was thick enough that I could paint it and things like that and wouldn't just look like an engrave. So, yeah. <laughs> and then I found out those kind of being two different triangular, circly shapes that actually would cut them out as two pieces instead of one. So I ended up having to like merge them together, make them one piece, and just a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun testing things and trying to figure everything out. Um, it did make me so frustrated at some times. I know I didn't record all of my BSing around on some of these files because I doubt you wanted to watch me stare at one project for like an hour. So since I had those already pre-made, the little squares, I just copied and pasted them along with the initial circles um, and brought them in and just deleted so then I had to recreate everything kind of all over again. Um, for the new piece, um, yeah.
And then here I'm just kind of cutting out parts of the circle that are aligning in with my actual image because that would actually get cut as well and would end up cutting part of my tool. Um, here I'm using the match font feature which allows you to match fonts um, to pictures or other text that you might bring in. So I just found something that was really close to what I thought was very similar to the font that they actually used and had. And then um, I'm using the curving text tool to actually curve it. And it has to curve it. It has to have an already line there. And then it kind of erases the line, which is why you see me kind of duplicating the circle. Just so I have the circle there and then <laughs> another circle that gets magically erased to then hold the text. I don't know why it does that, but it does. And then here I'm just, I kind of have the right font size and then a, the text just isn't long enough. So I ended up stretching the distance between the letters. And then again, I'm just copying and pasting a bunch of the squares on. And then I figured I will just slightly adjust them to fit my picture. So it's not, everything's not hundred percent exact. Um, I just get things as close as I can. And then as long as I'm happy with it, um, I hope everyone else would be as well. And then here, there's you have to outline the text or else, um, yep, here it is, <laughs> how to turn text into an actual like outline. So I had to look that up real fast. Um, so that's how I learn a lot of the tricks that I have and how to do a lot of things. Um, I basically end up just Googling for it and seeing there's tutorials um, and then figuring it out that way. Um, so, yep, Glowforge also requires for text for it to be outlined or else they'll see it as a picture and then try to do some fancy engraving and stuff with it. Um, but yeah, I don't know why I ended up putting all these in here when I ended up cutting them separate. Um, but but I think I just wanted like a visual look at it. I'm a very visual person. So that's probably the real reason. And then cutting off part of the circles here so it doesn't cut the square and then cut the circle so then they'd end up being separate pieces. I'm making it so it'd be could cut around it almost like a Mickey Mouse ear when you draw it. Instead of having like the circle of Mickey Mouse's head and then his ears and having those extra lines. That's basically what I'm doing. And then I have one more left to do. Yep, here's me <laughs> now destroying a lot of stuff. <laughs> to get the uh, uh, other parts. Let's see, I can't remember what I was doing. Oh yeah, the compass part. The compass, the easiest part. So I just resize it to fit in my initial circle, which is about three inches. And then I do two circles for the center. I end up doing the circle there. See, I'm kind of increasing the stroke. Pen tool again. And then they have a tool, I'm not really sure what it's called. <laughs> I call it the smoothing tool. <laughs> it basically looks like a pencil with rings around it. Um, and with, I've probably used it in some of the other parts, but then um, if you click and drag, it'll kind of fix the little points um, for you. And then I use that to help smooth my circles. Yep, here's me just copy and pasting so I have enough pieces. <laughs> Sometimes it's just easy to copy and paste a million times. Um, but, and then um, scissor tool is what I use to cut the pictures, or not the pictures, the circles, so I can get them out um, from cutting into my actual like compass and stuff like that. So you can't really put it at a, sometimes it yelled at you saying you can't put it at a intersecting point um, so you have to do it a little off so and then here is I put these on my TikTok I just started a TikTok not long ago um, where I posted these kind of these are my test cuts so I shrink them down and ended up cutting them with my glow forge clearly says it um, <laughs> I was having the hardest time setting <laughs> my camera up which is why I already had some of it already pre-cut um, before the video started, but enjoy the cut.
And there it is. There is masking tape over. This is draft pour from Will Pour, so you just peel it off. Um, and that's what it looked like completed. So here, as you can see, this is the initial cut, which is where I learned a lot and how I had to redesign my actual files to properly cut things on the Glowforge. And also how I figured out what lines I didn't need, um, which ones I needed thicker and things like that. So um, those are basically just thin cut lines. So I wouldn't actually be able to paint them or anything like that to kind of get the color or look that I wanted in the end. Um, and then those pieces, the little squares, end up being so small they kept falling because this is at true size. I didn't shrink these ones down. Um, they ended up falling through that hum honeycomb grid and it was a nightmare to try and get out. And then this is where I found out the text probably would be best to have engraved into the cover board instead of individually cut out. The text ends up just being so such small pieces that I feel like just working with them and they kind of just fell apart a little bit, I think just due to the size. So I decided that's when I'm going to engrave them into the actual cover board instead of making them separate to then be three dimensional. Um, plus because I feel like with them three dimensional along with everything else it might throw the balance off. Um, I ended up printing out pictures of my um, illustrator files and kind of highlighting on them to kind of indicate what I want to be three dimensional and like painted and textured and then what I want to just maybe be printed onto the cover. Oh, I just love this hourglass. <laughs> this one's my favorite of the two. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot from these. This is, I, always, I would totally recommend doing test prints and test things before you do final sizes and final pieces. Um, definitely with here, I found out that circle gets so small and the th pieces end up being so thin that they just broke in my hand. I'm like, I would have to be like, so delicate that I'd probably end up breaking like a million pieces. <laughs> um, so those are those test prints. And now while I got some press prints done, I decided to start actually assembling the actual board. And so <laughs> I messed up. So I ended up gluing one of the small pieces to what that would then be a small piece as well for the center box and that's when I noticed and I'm like well, I haven't noticed it yet <laughs> I just know that I messed up and I'm just like uh, cleaning it up and then I'm like oh no not yet girl when do you know that you effed up <laughs> God, no. uh, yeah it has to be at this moment <laughs> cleaning the glue off uh, and then I'm like yeah, yeah I need to glue it to these pieces <laughs> oh my gosh I tell you doing this for a first time I've never done woodwork I've never done a lot of this stuff so it was definitely a hundred percent a learning experience as I go <laughs> it was just it hurts to watch myself and commentate how bad I did <laughs> but oh uh, whatever girl just put that box together. Oh gosh. I feel stressed out because I think uh, I'm very thankful I cut the audio or didn't have the audio on my camera when I did this because building this box <laughs> I probably swore so many times because <laughs> I just couldn't oh I couldn't figure things out. I mean I knew how to do it but it's just sometimes things just weren't working in my favor. The odds were not in my favor. So basically here, I just glued the pieces on. The glue needs about an hour to dry. Um, so I wanted it to kind of semi start drying so it wouldn't be falling off so easily and just like uh, a wind blow knocked everything off because I do end up um, nail gunning nails into this, into the sides to help hold it. Um, I'm told the glue alone should be able to hold it, but talking to my dad, who's built a lot of stuff, you know, I went to him for a lot of advice on building this, and he was all, you gotta put the nails in there to help it hold together while the glue fully dries, and I'm like, 
well, what if I just, and I was like, okay, Dad, <laughs> follow what you say. You're more of the professional than I am. So here I'm basically pushing the two pieces together. It's a little off camera and shooting the nail and it didn't go all the way in. I have an electric one. It was like $60 and it couldn't put enough pressure without me actually one hand holding the gun and one pushing on the gun into the tool is the only way I would get a full tight push or of the nail or brad nail going in. So that's why I ended up having to hammer the corner pieces. Um, my dad ended up telling me that I should have actually nailed these pieces into the base instead of doing the outside and then nailing to the base. Um, that Then I might have been able to do two hands to pressure it. Or if you have an air gun, air pressured one, um, then you don't really need to two hand it. So, you know, if you have money, buy the nicer gun, um, and you should be able to just do it one-handed however you want. I didn't because a lot of my money ended up for this project ended up going towards the wood because um, it was pretty expensive. It was probably the most expensive thing for this whole project so far. I've been keeping track of everything <laughs> to see how much it cost me in the end, um, but all this box, all this box. I've been sending one of my coworkers pictures along the way. I ended up using way too many nails though. I ended up like putting one ever so far apart. I feel like you just need maybe one in each corner and maybe one in the center down the long ends. It would have definitely been more than enough. I think I just went nail crazy because I do like the nail gun. I built a wall in my basement and <laughs> went nail gun crazy with that. And I did risers on my stairs too, because I always have a fear of someone grabbing my ankles when I go down the basement stairs. So, but yeah, I think it so far it was turned out good. I love, love, love the color though of the dark walnut. Um, here I'm measuring to see how big to make the pocket at the bottom. I ended up doing two inches for the pocket at the bottom. Um, but I noticed once it was fully assembled, Ta -da, ta -da, because my camera cut off so unfortunately you don't get to see me actually building the rest but here we are almost at the end the last few photos my beautiful hinges but that is it for part three part four might be in about a week or two but uh stick with me bye